Hey everyone. I'm going to be doing this video as a follow up to my video I put out earlier today about plowing with my cup to that tractor. The plow is a real time saver. Um, it clears a much wider path uh, than the snowblower does because it's almost double the width of the snowblower. That being said, you disadvantage the plowing if you do really pile the snow behind. So I'm taking advantage of the fact that it's still arctic cold out today. Uh, it's only about 2 degrees. And I'm basically pushing the pile back further with the snowblower. Um, obviously the track is not going to push through a big mound of snow that I piled up. So just to make my life easier and to have a space to put snow for future storms, since we are only in the beginning of January, I take the snowblower out and basically lean back the piles so that when we get the next blizzard or snowstorm and I plow all the snow, I have a place to put it. The snowblower I'm using is a Aaron Snowtech. Uh, this is one of the first generation Snowtech snowblowers. And what it was, was a Aaron snowblower with a generic uh, Chinese or Japanese motor. And it cost me $600, and when they first came out, they had so-so reviews. But I took a gamble, and I spent the $600 on it, uh, because it should be shoveling, and shoveling out your car, and putting a plow guy every time. And before the tractor, this was the only way we had to clear snow at the house. So, there's been many times I've come home from work and had 28 inches on the ground and a big mound of snow at the end of the driveway I've had to crawl over and get to, and the snow blowers handled everything. Like anything, you have to take care of your equipment and it will take care of you. Every October, I do a full service on this. I check the belts, I check the uh, discs inside, I lubricate the cogs, uh, oil change, fresh fuel with stabilizer, uh, new spark plug. I'd much rather do a full preventative maintenance every October and know this is going to start when I really, really need it than not take care of it and have it fail at the worst possible time. Because generally, if you're using this, it's going to be a big snowstorm, and you're probably going to need it. I don't use it as much now with the tractor. I mainly use it in the function you see here is to uh, kind of wing back snow piles and make more room for future plowing. But if you're in the market for a snowblower, you know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like can grips and lights, but it's definitely worth your consideration if you're looking for a new or used uh, snow blower if you come across one of these. When I bought it new, it was $600, and it's been worth every penny for years and years and years. So, on to the next task. While I was plowing, overnight um, in the snowstorm and then also this morning I noticed the cotter pins that hold the main uh, roll pin for the plow to the plow frame uh, it either sheared off or vibrated out the metal on them isn't that good it's pretty much paper clip metal and I don't know if it's shearing off or if they're vibrating out because they're not very springy but uh, I noticed I had to replace that so I took the torch and heated up the ice to give me some more room and also I noticed there was a clanging coming from the right sided tire chain um, when I cut these I cut these out of old truck chains so there's two extra cross links that are there um, they just basically a flap of extra chain 
Um, they're tight on the wheel, but those two little cross link sections have been hanging. So they finally worked loose uh, due to use. So I uh, took some zip ties and I'm just loosely securing them. I mean, I'm not operating at a high speed. I got to worry about them flailing off and hitting something, but this just tidies it up a little bit and makes uh, makes it a little bit quiet so I don't hear it clicking against the uh, PTO engagement lever, the deck height lever. As I said in my other videos, you can get by without extra weight on one of these tractors in the winter, but you definitely need tire chains. Whether you buy them for the uh, tractor itself or you go cheap like I did and cut up an old set of uh, truck tire chains, uh, either way you do it, you definitely need some kind of tire chain. These turf tires, once they get packed with snow in between the treads, they just don't provide much grip. You might be able to get away with a few inches of snow, uh, especially if you're cutting down the bare pavement, but the minute you have to back into a snow bank or into some unplowed snow, you're, gonna, you're stuck. And these definitely give you a little bit better grip when you're pushing snow into a pile. Once I finally secure those two extra uh, cross-link chains, I cut off the excess zip tie and went back to what I was doing on the front now that the metal was cool. So basically, in the history of this plow, I replaced three of the original factory uh, MTD cotter pins. Like I said earlier, they're almost like a paper clip type metal. Uh, they're very thin, and this plow it does have some force on it, and I gotta give it that. You know, you have a, you have a four or five hundred pound tractor at a couple miles an hour, pushing and doing essentially an immovable object. So, you know, there is some stress on there, but I would recommend getting aftermarket cotter pins. Um, that are like a nice heavy steel. You can get those at Tractor Supply or Home Depot, but didn't have my hammer with me, so I had to use the crescent wrench again. I know it's improper, but it's the tool I had at the time without going in and out of the house and tracking snow inside. I will say, though, working outside when it's 2 degrees without gloves on definitely sucks. I don't know how the people in Alaska do it for nine months a year. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe to my channel.